Hey there, welcome to another Seed to Stage tutorial. Today I'm going to be giving out this uh, brand new tool that I've created called Transient Shaper. Uh, fir so first things first, I'm going to put the link down at the bottom, so if you want to follow along and use it, you can go right ahead. It's totally free. If you feel like giving me a little tip for it, uh, I would love it. <laughs> um, but anyway, if you don't want to pay anything, just put zero in the thing and you know download it. It's just an Ableton rack. All Ableton users can use this from version 9.6 on. So let's get to it. So let's check out what I got going on here. This is just a little groove that I made quickly to, to kind of show what this thing can do. Let's take a listen. Okay, so in, the, in each track, I've got an instance of the transient shaper. Uh, so let's just go ahead and solo out the drums and just take a listen to what we got going on here. So I have controls for sustain attack, uh, saturate, makeup gain, sustain length, and attack length, and the base of the saturator. So let's just go ahead and listen to this drum track, and I'm going to increase the sustain control. And before I, before I do this, um, when you're adding sustain to something, the sustain knob will bring up what's in the background. So as you can hear, there's some reverb in there, or there's some, uh, some ambience. So let's just go ahead and inch this up. Now the things you can start to hear are the length of the snare drum getting longer. That's the sustain of that snare drum. And if I turn it up even higher to these extreme levels, you can hear just so much in the background coming up. And it's pushing the front end of the, of the transient down. So you can think of this control as kind of a variable control. At lower levels, the initial attack is going to remain the same. As you increase it, that attack's going to go down and the sustain's going to go up. Now, it's kind of like releasing at weird times. You can tell uh, that it's going uh, 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 in weird places. So I can, the other control I've added for sustain is the length of it. So as I increase this, you can hear that I can make the sustain length a little bit longer. And obviously I have this at a pretty uh, extreme setting because I'm trying to get that get that effect so you can really hear it but in a real world application I would just add a little sustain here oh that's nice right around there okay so as you increase sustain you lose attack and I really want the drums to be punchy so you could think of the attack control as like the punch control this is adding more and more punch and then yet again I have another control for the length how much uh, how how big is that attack how long is that attack sound so I'm gonna increase the attack and as you can tell, as I increase the attack, the sustain level is actually going down. Because these two controls are intrinsically tied to each other. So I can turn this up a little more. There we go. That's a nice, punchy drum sound. And so the next thing we can do is we can A-B this, because it's always important with any effect to turn it off and turn it back on to make sure that you're adding what you're looking for, right? So that's our drum sound before. It's got less sustain on the on the back end and less attack. Now it's on. You'll also be able to tell something else. You'll notice that it's not as loud when I turn the effect on, but it sounds louder. That's the wonderful that's the wonderful uh, side effect of using this kind of compression. So so now another thing that I can do in order to get back to my level before is I can use this makeup gain. Just turn it up a couple dB. So now we're hitting the same level as with it off as when it's on. So we're just adding, what we're doing is we're kind of like adding energy to this. This is a little bit more energy than we normally would have. It's got more, it's got more um, attack, it's got more sustain. So let's go ahead and mess with some of these controls. If I want that sustain to kind of just be in your face and a little shorter, I can pull the sustain length down. That's kind of fun. And say I want even more, I want even more attack. I can actually turn this length up just a little bit. Boom. But now as you can see, it's a little bit louder than the original. So I'm just gonna pull the makeup gain back down and go down a dB. Yeah, probably make it at zero. Okay, so now you so now I've got this effect going. Uh, the next control over is the saturate control. So this is just using Ableton Saturator. As I turn this up, I'm adding distortion. 
And I also have this bass control, okay? This control shouldn't be that audible. It's really not designed to be audible. It's designed to kind of control your transients. As you can see, as I turn this up, the drums can't pass a certain level, even though it sounds about the same loudness, right? So now, the other thing I can do is I can control this bass control. Basically what this allows is for the low end of the drum set to pass through the saturator stage without getting stopped. If I turn it down, more bass gets let through. But remember, the trade-off is that you're going to have those bass peaks, okay? If I turn it the other way, listen to this. You can hear more of the low end distorting. And maybe that's a desired effect. I kind of like how it was right there in the middle. So once again, let's AB this. So look at all the control we have over these transients. We have the transient hitting all the way up here at like, you know, negative seven. But when I turn this on, we're getting a steady negative 10. So we've saved ourselves 3 dB. We've got nice sustain, we've got nice attack. It just sounds great, okay? So let's move on to the bass line. Take a listen to it. Nice stereo, very wide width bass line. So in this case, I like the sustain of this bass. It sounds pretty cool, but I'd like to add some attack. So let's turn the attack control up and let's watch these levels. Now you can see that punch happening. And this is where you really gotta, when you're using this extreme kind of um, attack adding, you really need to use the attack length to get the snap the right length, okay? So right now I'm at 15. If I turn it down, listen. That's almost like a click. As I turn it up, it's rounder. You know, it's a little bit more thick, I guess you could say. But it, but because it's thicker, it doesn't have the same uh, it doesn't have the same impact as the click kind of sound. So really, somewhere in this middle is pretty good. Now the other thing is that like, especially if you're just listening on laptop computers, uh, laptop speakers, or you're, maybe you're listening on your phone, it's kind of hard to hear this. It's in a low range. So well, once again. We're, we're making all these snappy, snappy sounds, and see how it's jumping up. Uh, when I turn this effect off, you know, it's it's hitting below negative 12, and when I turn it on, it's jumping way up higher. So, you know, one move you could do is, is, is use the, the makeup gain and dial it back. But notice that this this peaking is kind of what we want. We want this 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 attack to be like louder, so it so it sounds louder. So, one thing you can do is just turn up the saturation. And this is going to control, there, look at that. It's going to control that. We're going to put that back there. So when I turn this off, listen. When I turn it back on, we've got added punch, but we haven't added too much level. Now, the other thing is that if you want this to be uh, audible, once again, on uh, smaller devices, it's always a good idea to saturate your low end a little bit. And you can mess with this bass control to get it. Now, now it's kind of a tonal control. If I want more mid-range, I just turn the bass up. Right? If I want less, let more of the low end through, I can go that way. Okay? So I'm just going to add just a little bit of that bass. Okay? And we're going to A-B. This is our end result. As you can tell, the original's got, you know, it's kind of... It doesn't really have that much bite on the front end. Um, it's kind of bouncing around in terms of level. When I turn this on, boom, we get a little bit of snap at the beginning of that sound, okay? All right, so now let's move on to the final sound, the pluck. Now this is where we're really gonna be able to get into, you know, adding energy. We're gonna add energy to this, all right? That, that's that's what the, the, you know, the purpose of this is. And if we listen to this sound, it kind of sounds dull, it's kind of boring. But as I turn up the sustain, we're bringing out some of that background stuff. It sounds more aggressive. And so if I turn the length down, I get more, more of like a, you could almost think of it as like a gated reverb. As I turn it down, you can hear that reverb length increasing. And if I turn it up this high, the notes are almost interrupting the original, and that's kind of nice too. But obviously, when using these, you know, again, these extreme sustain settings, I need to add some of that attack back in there. So here we go.
And now I've got some attack. Now I've got this this really energetic sound. And it benefited from a little bit of a longer attack length. Okay. So now when we A-B this, here's the original. Let's turn it back on. Now, to me, that sounds like it has more energy, it sounds more fun, and it sounds, honestly, it sounds more original, you know? A, a, one of the, the great advantages to using these transient shapers is the uh, the fact that you can create sounds that sound uh, different, original, new, you know what I mean? As opposed to just kind of the vanilla stuff that comes out of your out of your, uh, you know, your drum samplers or your VSTs or whatever. This is, this is adding, um, a little bit of you, you know, this is, this is preference, you know, what are you looking for? Um, so, uh, now let's go ahead and listen to the sound and I'd like to control some of these, uh, the transients in another way by saturating them so that they don't jump around everywhere and we get a, a better level. So I'm going to turn up the saturation. And as you can tell, this is a subtle control. It's not really distorting that much. And I'm going to use the bass control to, to try to just rein that in even a little bit more. Oh, that's super nice. Okay. So now, like I like to do with all things, I'm going to use the key mapper so that we can A, B all three of these transient shapers all at once. All right? So I'm going to go up to the key mapper. I'm just going to map the, the Q key to each one of these on-off buttons. And, and again, the reason I'm doing this is so that we can listen to the before and after. All right? Now, what this transient shaper is doing is it's helping me shape these sounds into something that sounds has more energy, sounds original, doesn't sound like, you know, your vanilla sounds that are just coming out of your out of your stuff. And uh, yeah, just let's go ahead and listen to the original before this. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on the transient shapers, all three of them. Just feel the energy that that added. Now the last part of this is we're gonna we're gonna mix while all three tracks are playing because getting one track to sound good, again, it's always fun and it's great to solo tracks out, but really if you want to be better at mixing, the best thing to do is to use these devices when they're together. Okay? When they're all playing together. So you can figure out, all right, what's needed. Okay? Like for example, the kick drum and the and the bass line are gonna be fighting. The 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 plucky sound might be lasting a little bit too long. Maybe the sustain on the drums could change. Let's just go ahead and I'm gonna dial these transient shapers in uh, so that all three of these tracks play together nicely. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna have a little bit longer of a sustain on the drums. That's a little bit better. A little bit less sustain. That's nice. So now on the bass line. I probably don't need that much of the bass control on there. Get a little bit more low end there, okay? On the plucky, I feel like now it's just a little bit too much sustain. So I'm gonna turn that down. Okay, so this is without the transient shaper. Now I'm gonna engage it. Without it. With it. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Uh, it's a really lightweight uh, plugin. It only takes about you know one CPU each for one of these uh, on my computer. I'm sure it'll be a little bit different on your machine, but it's it's a very lightweight. It definitely uses less CPU than any of the other shapers uh, transient designers out there. Um, and yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out the Patreon if you want to know how to support the channel. Appreciate it, guys. Enjoy the, the rack. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks.